Hello, welcome to Steve McDonald Crafting and today what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a texture pour that's going to be two-tone and I'm going to show you how to do that using a craft resin and just a piece of crinkled paper and then some pigments afterwards and you're going to love this one. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos and ring my notification bell. I've got my resin mixed up and I'm going to be pouring it in here and as you can see I'm using a fairly thickish resin and I'm only pouring it about halfway up or just below halfway up this mold. If, I'd just like to say a quick thank you to all my members whose names are coming up now. If you'd like to become a member and benefit from all the perks of membership, then the link for that is in the description. So I'm now going round, because of this mold, you can get trapped butter balls in the edges. So I went round with that to lift them up and then pop them with my lighter. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the crinkle on top of this. If you'd like to buy me a coffee and just say thank you for any of my videos and get your name on my coffee board for next month, then the link for that is in the description. What I'm doing here is I'm going through and doing some squidgy widgy because you will get some trap bubbles underneath this film and you want to get rid of as many of those as possible, if not all of them, because you don't want the holes left over. And because this is quite a firm paper, and I don't want this to unravel and then not get any crinkles. I've put these wooden sticks on and then I mug on it and now they'll stay there and they won't move and I'll leave it to cure up. Well this is cured overnight and it should be fairly easy to take this plastic off here. It should just pull off. Yep, there we go. Any bits that are where it's caught up, and you see that's caught up because the plastic had obviously risen. And I will take those off because I don't want anything higher than the actual coaster itself. And it's not going to make any difference to what we're going to do here. The next bit is, what I want to do is I want to turn this into a two-tone. I will keep this plastic, by the way, and use it again. <laughs> Never one chuck anything out. I'm just going to get a brush, but before I get a brush, I'm going to prepare myself getting a couple of pieces of kitchen paper and making them wet. Because this is important. This is important, people. This is important stage. It's very hot in here today because I don't know what's going on with the UK weather. They're nice and wet and they're nice and ready. And then the next thing I need is my Arteza Fancy Black, which is iridescent. And I'm going to put a little bit on my mat because it washes off really easy on the mat. So there's a little bit there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint this over this getting that in and all around. Now, I'm only gonna do one coat and I specifically I wanna only do one coat and you'll see why. Right, and now I'm taking one of my, I might only need one, but I'm taking one of my cloths and I'm just taking some bits off here. Like that, can you see? So it's not all on, but it's not all off. I don't know if it shows through the back. Yeah, if you look through the back, you can actually see where I've taken bits off. And now what I need to do is I need to let that dry. And so I'll let that dry and then I'll come back and show you what the next stage is. Well, that's all nice and dry now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to brush over my crimson red mica powder. And this is one of the mica powders that I'm testing for a set that I'm putting together of really brilliant, vibrant, mica powders and I found that this one here that I'm using it will definitely be in the set because it's the reddest red I have ever used in a mica powder and it doesn't go pink at all when you're using it lovely to get a really good red so all I'm doing is I'm brushing that all the way over and because we used an iridescent paint as well it'll keep all its iridescence right I don't want any loose bits so delicately tap that off being delicate and then I'm gonna just wipe that up. So now that's all on there and it's nice and covered you should still see some transparency through it which is what we're looking for if you can see from the back. Now what we need to do is we need to put the last coat of resin on that. So now I'm brushed the mica powder on here. What I'm going to be doing is filling this up to the top of the mould with my resin. Check out my other channel as well. The link for that is in the description below. Make sure you pour slowly with this because you don't want to introduce unnecessary bubbles and trap them under the crinkles and I'll let this cure up. 
The second one of these is now cured and all I need to do is take off the paper or the plastic or the crinkle or whatever it is you want to call it. And the reason I've done a second one is I want to show you the difference between just brushing the mica powder on or adding the mica powder to the resin and then pouring a darker base into it. And there is a difference and I like both techniques but it gives you a choice of which ones to use. So I'm just going to go over and paint this in the same way that I painted the first one I showed you and then I'll come back and I'll show you when I put the mica powder in. As you can see, I'm now mixing up my mica powder in my resin. I'm putting a nice big dollop in because I want to make sure that it can be seen through the bits. So I'm just popping that over the top of this now. And again, I'm pouring it really slowly as a not to introduce bubbles. And then once again, I will let this cure up for about 24 hours. Well, these are both cured now, and this is the one with the mica powder painted onto it. And this is the one where I've put mica powder into the resin and then poured it in. So let's take a look at this one first. And that one, I think, has come out really well. I, love, I do absolutely love this technique. But the thing is with this technique is when you paint it on, you get the transparency. Now, that can look really nice if you've got a velvet base on the bottom of your coaster or you're adding it onto a table, but you can see the two-tone effect in there really, really well. So this is the one where I poured the actual mica powder into it. I did over pour this a little bit, but... And what you don't get on this one is you don't get the transparency, but what you do get is you still get a really nice look to it. And they are very similar, but they do have their differences. I love this effect. And the more crinkles that you put into it, the different effect you get. If you use something like saran wrap or cling film or things like that, then you will get a lot more crinkles and it will look a lot more like crushed velvet. But my big advice to you would be when you are squidging it all up inside, don't hook it over because then you'll get the thin plastic like saran wrap and things caught up into it and it's really difficult to get out. But it's a great technique and it can be used for coasters, it can be used for jewellery, it can be used for so many different things. Let me know in the comments what you think and which one you think is the best, the one with the transparent back or the solid back and just look at those love i love that iridescent paint and i love mica powders only thing that hasn't got in it is glitter but you could add glitter that wouldn't be a problem either don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos and if you'd like to buy me a coffee just to say thank you and help support this channel then the link for that is in the description below along with the link for everything that i've used today take care enjoy your resin bye